You want to get up close and personal, Will? (laughs) Yes, you do. Not for me. Up close and personal with the PlayStation 5 controller. Oh, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) you'll do that. Apparently, we have the best images yet. Because, of course, we don't have one yet. Because, of course, Sony, they're not replying to our all of our messages and phone calls. Uh, we even we even wrote them a letter in really? an envelope. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we even sent them a request by pigeon. Oh. Carrier pigeon. The old school way? Yeah, they still didn't. But we got the Xbox Series X over there, and if you caught the most recent video, we we we're playing it. Oh yeah. We got yeah. a whole new setup. So we are next gen. Mm-hmm. And we of course have have uh, very closely examined the controller. We've used the controller for the Xbox Series X. We're just waiting to get our hands on the PlayStation controller. In fact, so many people are waiting to get their hands on the PlayStation controller. You know who has their hands on the PlayStation 5 controller, Will? Travis Scott. Yeah. Him and Keeley. That's it. Yeah. They just... Lucky guys. Jeff Keeley and Travis Scott, they just hang out and and trade the controller back and forth. Yeah. That's how it works. And then they eat the Travis Scott uh, McDonald's meal. Mm-hmm. And it's really it's a great time, actually. Oh, yeah. I'm jealous. Anyway, outside of being Travis Scott and having Sony respond to our carrier pigeon messages, which mm. they will do. Mm. Sony, I'm looking at you. These are the closest images we're going to get for now. And uh, they come via an Instagram account from an Argentinian firm named Evzen. And uh, as you can see, the watermark they've embedded into the pattern of the buttons. You see that? It says Evzen. Oh, yeah. So don't you dare try to snag that, Will, Uh. without the shout out. And you scroll down and you're going to get these very close up images, which the people they love because it's because they need to get close. They may buy this thing. They're spending money. They're motivated, and they need to know. So that's a USB Type-C connector. Here's an interesting one. The grip oh, pattern wow. is actual triangles, squares, and circles. Of course, uh, pulling the inspiration from the buttons on the front of the PlayStation. Yeah. You like that? Very cool. I, I never knew. That's an attention to detail. You may not even notice it when you pick it up. Mm-hmm. That's how close you have to get to realize what you're gripping on. And we have the thumbstick. Now, I'm curious about the thumbstick because I have videos going back to the to the ancient times where you I would play uh, NBA. Uh. And NBA, you're hammering forward all the time. If you did like a career mode or something, you're pressing forward all the time. I don't get a chance to play this stuff as much anymore. Mm. But back then, I could hammer forward a lot. And the earliest versions of the PlayStation 4 controllers, you could actually wear down the surface. Uh. So I'm real curious about that texture right there. But I like it. I yeah. like the way it looks right now. Yeah, yeah. Looks super grippy and and uh, substantial. Scroll down a little bit more. You can see the buttons themselves, no colors. Very simple. Just a shape. Do you think they'll light up? Oh, I think they're going to light up. Yeah. Are they going to light up? Has Maybe this been covered? Maybe for the color coordination kind of thing. Mm-hmm. For games? I, I don't know. Yeah, well, the big thing with this controller is the uh, hapticness of it and the various haptic motors that are in there. Sony sees it as a differentiating factor when compared to the previous generation, and they, they see it as a factor compared to the Series X. Yeah. Where the controller is very similar with that console to the previous model. The PlayStation, on the other hand, this controller is a total departure from the previous model. Mm. It's, and people don't know how to feel about it. Actually, if you scroll down a little bit, Will, we can get more into the haptic haptic stuff because there is further reading. There's another article you can click at the very bottom where you can see a teardown of the controller. Hmm. So they took it to another level. So to go with those images that we just looked at, there's the link right there, Will. Oh, you missed it. What? It's the uh, the picture of the teardown right there. This hey. one? No, this you got to go scroll down. No, you guys, right there. Instagram user tears down a PS5 DualSense controller. (laughs) There you go, Will. (laughs) And uh, there's a series of pictures here. I think it's from the same guy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Argentinian peripheral firm. I don't know how they got their hands on this. Maybe they'll send it to us. Yeah, this is like a deep dive here. Maybe they'll send it to us if they can put it back together. Anyways, Uh they took the whole thing apart. You see the board. You can see the internals. It's actually interesting, the structure, how the the black portion is completely separate. It's actually a two-piece. Yeah, it's not painted on or something. No, the whole section comes off of the controller. It's uh, 
very excited to get my hands on with this and see how it compares uh, to the old PlayStation controller and, of course, to the Xbox Series X. It looks a little more slender, but I think it grew a little bit comparatively. iPhone 12 production is at full tilt, 24-hour operation, mandatory overtime, no holidays! Wow. Imagine that. You see that order coming no down. Holidays. Yeah. People need their iPhones this holiday season. You're not leaving. Foxconn. Mm. So we have a report here. Apparently, according to the South China Morning Post, that's Vin's favorite newspaper, uh, you can earn 5,000 to 6,000 won per month, which is US $880. If you work at the factory more than 90 days, there's a handsome amount of special pay. Mm. So this is what you're getting paid. Uh, right now, it's mandatory overtime. All right, you're not leaving. They've got incentives for hiring new people. And you're not taking that holiday. Apparently, there's an eight-day national holiday that normally begins on October, uh, October 1st. Hmm. You're not having it. No. Too many iPhones. Yeah. Did you expect that, the, uh, that a person working at the iPhone assembly plant, did you expect they were making 880 per month? Uh, no. I was expecting less. But, I mean, it seems okay. A thousand? <laughs> I mean, what are you doing there, you know? You can't buy that iPhone one month to pay, man. I guess, yeah. But, I mean. You don't need that iPhone? I don't think so, no. I mean, if you're working, you know, a month, uh, yeah, just checking circuit boards and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're happy with it. Okay, well, I just had to, pr I had to press you there, Will. I mean, yeah. How to get to the bottom of it? Here. I had to get to the bottom of it. Oh. Of course, that particular employee, 33 years old, and they worked at the factory for over four years. I don't, I don't know, uh, an entry level or a first year person presumably would not be getting eight, 880. Mm-hmm. USD or between five and six thousand one, and of course, cost of living, expenses—it's all different, right? Well, don't they live at like a residence? That's in, that's important to note as well. Yeah, it's a whole Foxconn village. Mm -hmm. Anyway, normally they would get a national break, the Mid Autumn Festival, which is an eight-day break from October first to eighth. But Foxconn workers are being asked not to take this time. One worker said some are happy to comply with the stringent iPhone 12 production demands because the law ent entitles them to triple pay for the first three days of the national holiday. So it's kind of like an overtime situation, hmm. but uh, it's not an optional overtime situation. But if you have to do the overtime, you can pay a little bit more. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, when it comes to that 880 per month, I don't know if that applies to everybody in there. I, I, To be clear, that's just one particular mm -hmm. person and maybe they got a lot of overtime in there and mm -hmm. whatever else. But either way, it, it makes a lot of sense they're running at max capacity. I don't even know. They're late to the party, right? Apple would normally be further along. The announcement is delayed. Everything's going to have to happen fast here. Mm -hmm. And they're coming from behind because of pandemic stuff. And so now it's like, is we got we, we've already got word and speculation on next-gen console shortage. Yeah. Is it going to be any different with iPhone? Are you worried about quality control? That's another question. You start speeding things up, you got question. people working around the clock 24 hours. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. we got to wait and see, but yeah. people want their iPhones this holiday season. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. You remember we were playing with that, that foldable PC from Lenovo? Oh, yeah. That seemed like a long time ago now. The concept at the time it was just a concept wasn't it mm -hmm. the x1 foldable they're making it not only are they making it you can order it right now well oh yeah it'll cost you a few dollars how much close to 2500 oh what well do you think? for a laptop but is it a laptop yeah. is it a tablet it's hard to say it hard is say. A, a much larger foldable than what we've seen it's uh, it's it's a grown, it's a scaled up version of the foldables we've seen, but it has so many funky characteristics, like the ability to split the display with a digital keyboard on the bottom side, or the ability to plop a mechanical keyboard on top of one half of the screen. Yes. 
or the ability to set the whole thing on a kind of easel and stick a keyboard in front of it. Yes. Or the ability to carry it under your arm like a nice little, uh, it looks sort of like a notebook, mm. uh, 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 like a moleskin almost. It's leather bound. Yeah. It looks leather bound. I don't know if it's probably looking. not actual leather. It's an OLED display, 2,500 bucks, starting at 2,500. I could probably spec it a few more than that. It's got an Intel Core i5 chip, some sort of custom chip. The ThinkPad X1 Fold, I've been a ThinkPad fan in the past. It's funny though, because one of the major reasons that I'm a fan of ThinkPad products is the amazing keyboard. Mm -hmm. and yeah, you've always been a fan of those. Here you have a completely keyboardless device with a keyboard attachment. Can they bring the same DNA through on the detachable keyboard? Look, it has a kickstand. This is such a strange device, I love it. Maybe Very they, cool, yeah. Maybe they send it over to me and I place it right here. I don't know. Hmm. And I goof around. Well, we're getting it. Oh. They're going to send it over. Oh, they're sending it over, aren't they? So, yeah, that's exciting. So, we're going to goof around a little more than, uh, obviously, the original video was just a prototype. Mm -hmm. So, I remember I remember there were certain things that are like, oh, that's going to change with the final version and so on. Uh, what, what else can I tell you about it? Well, it's a 13-inch notebook. Of course, that's the whole display. If you're using the whole display, 8 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte of storage, 11th gen Intel processors, 50 watt hour battery, and it weighs just 2.2 pounds with 5G support. They say their hinge is robust. You'll be bending and folding for years to come. It's a 2K display, 16 by 10, and uh, it's about the same height as a 14-inch 16 by 9 laptop. Uh, no, wait, that's a different model. The Nano, that's a different model. 13.3? Uh, ign ignore what I ignore the last part that I just said, but it it is two point. It will be 2.2 pounds. Oh. So anyway, many different ways to use it. We we're only scratching the surface. This is. Some of this technology, it does look like a like a real ThinkPad keyboard, by the way. It does, yeah. And something interesting, you can fold the whole unit up with the keyboard on the inside, mm -hmm. which is quite That's nice. That's useful. You don't have to put it away somewhere. Yeah, it's a nice spot to hold your keyboard. They also say it's durable. They just dropped something on it in this video. Anyway, we are in a situation right now where the technology might be a little bit ahead of our uh, ability to imagine it in our lives. It's like, hey, we can fold screens, and everybody's scrambled. Where, where are we folding? What are we? Yeah, and we talked about, about this. the use case. Let's just do it. Yes, and and we've talked about this in the past. How that can be frustrating because people say, I don't need that, but for me, I, I think it's inspiring because it's sometimes, especially in the early stages, you know you're on to something when you can't. Your the the more futuristic products require some imagination. Imagination from a construction and engineering standpoint and imagination from a user standpoint mm -hmm. and m imagination from a software developer standpoint. Everybody has to look at the technology, scratch the sides of their heads in the temple region and say, huh, what could we do with that? Yeah. What could we do with that? Microsoft is doing it. Samsung's doing it. Lenovo's doing it with the ThinkPad. Mm -hmm. So I'm not mad. Mm -hmm. Let's experiment, have a little fun, human beings making things. Mm -hmm. Speaking of making things, apparently uh, Apple is looking into to an unusual design, potentially for an upcoming MacBook or other device. They're working on a patent around a particular type of hinge, which may be reminiscent of something else that you've seen in the past. So I'm going to test you right now. Test the, your historical knowledge of tech devices here. Scroll down a little bit. And you see the patent filing, a little bit more. And you see the patent filing. And you see the hinge. I want you to focus in on the hinge. Does it remind you of anything, Will? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, what, the Surface laptop? Wrong! It's not. Uh, well, that is. <laughs> it is. It's the Surface book. Oh, okay, whatever. The well Surface laptop... <laughs> Has a much more traditional hinge. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know where I was going with it. It's the Surface Book. It had like a curve. No, for the longest time, I made the same mistake that you. That's why I asked you because yeah. it's hard to book laptop. It looks like a laptop, but of course, what's special about the Surface Book? The entire 
computer portion is in the display and you can just yank it off and use yeah, it on, tablet. The, on the couch as a tablet. Right. The right. Surface laptop is just a laptop. That's it. It doesn't even flip around or anything. Yeah, well, you know what I was saying. Nah, I don't know what you're saying. Anyway, so imagine an Apple version of that. Now, it's important to note in their patent filing here, it looks more almost like the magic keyboard thing they have for the iPad because it looks it looks like there's magnets in there and you can slap a tablet on top of it. So yes, this hinge could be used in a number of different devices. It could be a, a laptop, but Apple keeps pushing towards the iPad as their focus. I mean, there's uh -huh. a feeling, a sentiment that that's really what they want to advance. So is this the best of both? Is this an enhancement on what they've already done with the Magic Keyboard product where you could have a modular setup mm -hmm. and uh, and maybe you don't yank the whole thing off, but it slaps on top and interfaces in that fashion mm -hmm. because this design actually looks like it has two of those accordion-style hinges. It has one immediately behind the keyboard and then a second one halfway up where the screen portion would be. So it's going to be weird. It's going to give you angles. Mm -hmm. The double accordion flippy foldy laptop slash convertible of course if this happens people will point that they'll make memes out of it they'll say yeah. well microsoft did that hinge with whatever i don't know i don't care too much about that i think yeah. if you can do a better version of it if you can do something interesting with it go for it innovation yeah we'll see what go you can do it. we'll see what you can do this company hyperjuice has a kind of uh, outlandish product here you ever wanted 1600 watts of charging well yeah you did all the time yeah you did you didn't you yeah you, this is what you think about this is what guys Wake like you and in i the morning, i think about this yeah guys like you and i we imagine 1600 watts of charging these are stackable gan chargers each capable of 100 watts you can stack 16 of them together to get 1600 watts off of a single power port mm. can you imagine this well you know you're always running out of ports power ports yeah. You can't, <clears throat> you got the extension cord and everything else. No, 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 no. These just plug into one another. Hmm. And then all your gadgets and devices are powered up. It's a beautiful thing. In fact, if you scroll down to the next little graphic here, you'll see a whole table worth of laptops and devices charging off of a single power port through stacking. Yeah, you bring your own uh, GAN charger. That's it. You're good. Plug into your buddy's GAN. Got your own GAN. Okay, this is on Kickstarter right now. I've seen Hyperjuice's products in the past. Very interesting stuff. They have a 65-watt option with two USB-C, one USB-A. They have a 100-watt option with three USB-C, one USB-A. And uh, each has uh, this built-in this uh, built-in plug rated at 1,500 watts. The the plug on, on the charger itself can output 1,500. So wow. even, even if you didn't want to daisy-chain chargers together, you could just plug something else in. Mm to the to the port you can see it's the size of a, some tic tacs when's the last time you had a tic tac will it's been forever been a been a minute as the uh, as the youngsters say this is on kickstarter right now they blew past their initial goal of a hundred thousand they've got 300 grand in orders right now this is a company that's been on amazon in the past everybody wants a gan charger everyone's rushing to the charger market right now because of course apple is not going to be including a charger in the next iPhone and people are going to look elsewhere. So everyone's saying, well, look, they're half a million bucks now. Everybody's saying, well, we want to be your next charger for everything. Mm. And so they're rushing to put out the products in time. Samsung may not in include chargers in their next models. And so now we're just going to, instead of having the chargers that the that the manufacturers give us, we're just going to have a, a stack of GAN chargers. Yeah. Because we're always going to think the next one is better. Mm -hmm. And guys like you and I are going to have seven different GAN chargers. We'll oh, yeah. be like, see, we saved the environment. <laughs> Meanwhile, we just boat loaded oh, our GAN. Yeah. So, I, of course, I'm joking. Fill the fort with them. Of course, I'm joking. It's, uh, take it easy. Google has shown off the Pixel 5 again. <laughs> on their Twitter? Yeah, on their Twitter. It was uh, Japan, uh, Google Japan on their Twitter. They just did, a, you know, a quick, friendly little Google uh, Pixel 5 post. Mm. You know, you scroll down a little bit, you can see it. You know, just a friendly one. No big deal. You've seen it anyways. Who cares? Mm. Well, uh, apparently they were a bit too soon because they yanked it down. But uh, it's no surprise to us that we can just basically say it now with absolutely 100% confidence unless everybody is trolling us, including Google themselves. 
which I don't think so. That would be a real long-term troll. That's what your Pixel 5 is going to look like. And an interesting takeaway here, Will, is is to think about how much we've heard about the Pixel 5 and how little we've heard about the XL product. Mm. It's weird. It's like all the leaks now are really focused in on this one model, this one mm -hmm. Pixel 5 model. So I don't know what that means. There's supposed to be this Pixel 4a 5G as well, which is the name I hate most of any smartphone in 2020 if they go with it. Of course, we don't have to wait long because tomorrow's the event. Tomorrow yeah. or today when you're watching this video. In fact, so that would be September 30th, and we're going to get all the details for real from Google. Mm -hmm. And maybe even a device. Yes. Maybe hopefully. even our very own Pixel 5 to evaluate. You know we're going to try out that camera. Mm -hmm. You know we're going we're gonna, to uh, uh, be, be staring at that incredible processing that goes on inside the stock camera app. Mm -hmm. You know that's what we're going to be doing. Oh, yeah. Speaking of leaked Google products, you must have seen this one. Home Depot started selling a Google product that hasn't even been announced yet. Announced. Yeah. Announced. That's a new, wow, that is high-level leaking. They have a lot of inventory, I guess. It's hilarious. <laughs> uh, it's the new Chromecast with Google TV up for sale right now for $49.99. Of course, not can announced. Can you still buy it? What's that? Or yeah. is it? Oh, yeah. you can still buy it now. Yeah, it's on the shelf. Oh, People are finding it in it. all kinds of different Home Depots. Oh, okay. P purchased directly in-store from Walmart and the Home Depot. They People have picked up uh, last week. I don't know if Google pol even tried to police it at that point. They're like, ah, one more day, yeah. few people get it early, whatever. The funny part is on the receipt, it doesn't say Chromecast. It says Sabrina Abbey Rock Candy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you bought at Home Depot. That's the code name for the device. So you would think maybe somebody inside a Home Depot would say, huh, that's a weird inventory name. Yeah. Maybe we're not selling that yet, but you know how it goes. It's not the right skew. They got so many skews. Imagine Home Depot, how many skews they got. Mm. They got a skew for the little Nails hardware. And, yeah. yeah. It's incredible. So anyway, that's what it looks like. They're kind of changing the name of this stuff a little bit. So it's now, it's called uh, Google TV is what they're calling the interface. They got, Of course, the price is listed there, $49.99. It's going to come in a white finish, which Google calls snow. And uh, it's been, we're going to find out everything once again at uh, on September 30th, which is today at 2 p.m. Eastern. And it has a remote, by the way. Oh, yes. It has a, a kind yeah. of a Apple TV-esque yeah. remote. With kind of like a touchpad. Or a Roku top. remote. They yeah. all kind of look like that. These slender little remotes. But anyways, yes, we'll find out everything at 2 p.m. today, which is shortly after you're watching this, so we don't have to wait too long. Uh, this one, this is very surreal. We've seen this concept car, this Mercedes-Benz concept, and every time you see it, it's you. your eyes, you feel like your eyes are playing tricks on you. Is it... CG. Yeah, is it really there in front of me? And then finally this clip comes out of it driving and these guys driving it. I'm like, oh yeah, it actually is a thing. Uh -huh. It's real. The crab walk thing that it can do side to side. The center piece that allows you to steer it. Mm -hmm. uh, they could have goofed us as well. These two guys look very polished. So they could have goofed us. But they're saying this is actual dry footage now. And there's a full out video about the development of it. And the interface, the Vision AVTR or Avatar road test. I mean, my goodness, that is the coolest car ever. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. I how Even do how you, it operates? There's some. There's definitely like there's some. No drive, there's uh, no steering wheel. Yeah, there's some no. kind of autonomous component because you can't. Your only input can't be this little joystick in the center where you just uh, uh, rest your hand, and that seems. The, 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 the doors and windows are this glass and the tires move in every direction. Look, he's completely lounging. Did you see the orientation of his legs sitting in the front seat? He's lounging. Yeah, yeah. He's and not in driving mode. No. And, and, and because the joystick, the interface is in the center between the passenger and driver, presumably either could control it, right? Yeah, that's true. He could just move his hand and the other guy could get on there. And, uh, of course, it has the, the crazy gills on the back of it. The thing is inspired by Avatar. Mm -hmm. And it all, it turns on when you place your hand down on the control portion. It's like palm identification. or Palm something. identification. It's so incredible. And to see it in the real world and to see it driving 
it is the future in motion. Now, obviously, there's more questions than answers. It's still a concept. You're not going to pick this thing up anytime soon, but it goes to show you, man, the human imagination mm -hmm. and execution, even for a prototype. I love it, man. Mm -hmm. It's so out there. It's like if you asked... There, if you ask a person to sketch up a futuristic car, this is what it would look like. No, nope, just nobody would ever make it. Yeah. And Mercedes made it. Yeah. They they said within this video that they were inspired by nature and they wanted it to make look almost organic, mm -hmm. like some sort of a creature, and and that it would kind of blend with the environment, and and same with the aerodynamics and the way it floats through mm -hmm. space. It does have a kind of. Almost like a deep sea creature kind of feel to it. Yeah, with the gills. Yes. In the back. Yes. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna sit in that one day, Will. Don't you worry. Mm. Speaking of uh, vehicles, <laughs> futuristic vehicles. Mm. You already knew about the Cybertruck. It's this futuristic vehicle we're actually gonna be able to get. Uh, however, in the meantime, people's enthusiasm for it is off the charts. We talked about replicas in the past, but this this is a whole different level. Yeah. As you can see here, we have the amazing cardboard Tesla Cybertruck capable of actual off-roading. Turn on the sound effects a little bit here, Will. You're going to really appreciate this. Everything will be manifested to the outside, to the omnidirectional... Oh, you're getting audio collapse. from the previous, the from the Mercedes guy. Because oh. it's an artificial intelligence. There go. Yeah, do me a favor and just rewind this a little bit. Rewind the cardboard Cybertruck and get the sound effects going. Listen to this. Jesus. <laughs> He's got a real metal sound effects. This is a, an actual off-roading cardboard Cybertruck construction video. You can kill the music there now. And and it has an ATV to go with it. And the whole thing is drivable. I don't know that I've ever seen fandom or enthusiasm around an upcoming vehicle to the same extent as a Cybertruck. Mm -hmm. where people are just full out building yeah, and there's an audience for it. Yeah. Look at he has a suspension on this thing. Legit suspension and popsicle sticks. <laughs> yeah, quite a few cardboard. As it's well. a this is a little DIY project. And now it's not as elaborate as the guy who just built an actual DIY Cybertruck. <laughs> this is more of an arts and crafts version, but I am impressed by the treads. I am impressed with its ability to actually go off-road like an RC vehicle. I am impressed with its ability to fit a tiny little ATV in the trunk. So anyway, yeah, you can find auto. this. I guess it's on YouTube. You can go watch this video of the DIY project. What is the name of the channel? Just so we get a proper shout-out going here. Uh, Lieberman. He's got almost a million subscribers. It is the DIY card cardboard Cybertruck. Maybe not quite as cool as a Mercedes vehicle, but not far off. Mm -hmm. All right, last story of the day. I don't know if you know about this. You're the you're a gaming guy. Uh, D did you ever play the GTA stuff? You must have at some point. Oh, you course. you and yeah. I played GTA stuff on King Street in the very old days. Yeah. yeah. GTA five? Was it five? I think Four. it was five. Well, who knows, man? Wait. Was it the New York one or the I don't LA looking? I don't remember. Many years ago, you and I played GTA 5 like the day it came out on King Street. Yeah, I think it was 5. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it might have been yeah. 5. But everybody's played GTA at some point in their lives. There's this guy, uh, or the, yes, this guy that used to work at uh, Rockstar, right? Mm -hmm. Rockstar made They made GTA. He's now raised $40.8 million dollars to create his next game, all right? And this next game is called Everywhere. It is a sci-fi open world game. And this thing sounds so ambitious. Listen to this. Can I can I say something? Can I read something to you here? Benzies worked on the Grand Theft Auto series at Rockstar North until 2016. They got into a dispute by the way, and he claimed that they owed him 150 million dollars. They settled, I don't know for how much, but presumably the guy's got cash, including the $40 million he just raised. Now, the ambitious part is what, you, what he wants to do with this cash. Everywhere has a lot of traditional game mechanics, but we're going for something more. 
that draws inspiration from, well, everywhere. Everywhere? Yeah. Everywhere. What's your, what's your game about, everywhere? Mm. No, no, what's it about, everything? Where does it take place? Everywhere. Mm. What can I do in it? Anything. Mm. Whoa. Here, here's the next quote. Players are getting smarter and require more from their games. And we want players to have the real freedom to live in our worlds in the ways they want to. We're aiming to offer a huge variety of game modes and styles that not only tell our stories, but also enable players to live in the identities and adventures they most want to explore. Wow. Reminds me of uh, one of those directors like Sid Meier. They created um, Spore. Remember that game Spore? Oh, yeah. Super, uh, it didn't go well, but it was, it was very ambitious. Ambitious. Yeah. Yes. But this, but I think the reason this matters is because it's not from no one. Yeah. It's ambition, but from someone who's kind of executed it in the past. Uh-huh. GTA, very popular game series, open world, kind of mm-hmm. really did the open world thing. Yeah. And for that, for you to take that know-how and apply it to, oh, it's, yeah, it's like GTA, except you can do anything. Or it's like GTA, but you can go anywhere. Or it's inspired by everything. And all of a sudden, you're like, whoa. So is he building the Matrix? Exactly. You know? Exactly. It's an alternative world. It's like it's like the advanced, the original. What was the promise of that game? What was the game? It's um, an alternate no world. No Man's Sky. No, 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 no. no. But no, way before that. Uh, it, it's like an alternate reality that you can live in. Alternate reality. Second Life. Second Life. Oh, yeah. The MMO? Yeah, Second Life. Yeah. It's like it's like that, but if you apply GTA gameplay to it, yeah, you have your whole because people did that in GTA anyways, right? They had their house and their cars and whatever else. And if you expand on that and you open up the possibilities, and look, he has to execute it, and it's so hard to build these things, mm-hmm. obviously. But the ambition, the 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 description of the ambition at the moment sounds really intense. Oh and, yeah, and interesting to yeah, me. Yeah. The game hasn't been seen in a little while, and the current state of the title is unclear. But this new round of f- funding, it's obvious everywhere, is, is, is at least still in active development. So this $40 million isn't all the money they've raised. It's just the most recent round of funding. So presumably they got a war chest. They got cash, Will. Mm-hmm. But it gets you to thinking, you know, they spent $100 million on some movie. What does it take to build this game that he's talking about? Yeah, I would imagine it would take a lot of scientists. Mm. Um, something to do with systems or like algorithms. Like No Man's Sky had some sort of like data thing with it because it had to build worlds in a sense, right? So, yeah, it would be. So you're telling me it's expensive? Oh yeah, those it's scientists. Like a Elon never, Musk yeah. <laughs> kind of project. Anyway, we'll keep an eye out for it. It's called Everywhere. And it's probably not coming out very soon. Hmm. <clears throat> However, interesting stuff. 